Good morning, everyone, and a special good morning to everyone online this morning. Uh, it's great to be here. It's great to welcome people online. If you're here, you've got hymn sheets and service sheets in front of you. If you're online, you should find your service sheets uh, if you follow the links from the website. And um, there's also a children's worksheet you can follow um, that relates to the, the DVD the kids will be getting later in this service. Now, if you're here, I need to say, please wear your face masks. Thank you very much for looking around. Please fill in a track and trace card. Please use hand sanitizer. And as you may know by now, we're not doing a collection plate passed around. If you want to make an offering, place it in the bucket at the back of the service, please. It's great to be here. Uh, we thought we might be completely opened up today for an 11 o'clock service. Um, that doesn't look as if it's going to happen now until July. Um, and it'll be the end of July for our first open air. So we're here at 10, 12, and 18.30 um, in smaller numbers as normal. But we're still here to worship the Lord, and um, we're going to do that. We're going to sing to God's praises. Rich is going to lead us in singing, and Joseph, you can mumble behind your masks. And it's great to have um, a full band today, which means I'm redundant. So uh, I'll just warble along with the harmony. But um, please... Our theme is worship together. Whether you can sing or just have to mumble, let's worship the Lord as we go. Richard, all yours. Thank you, Dave. And let me echo that warm, warm welcome to this our place of worship for today. Um, whether you're gathered here in person in St. John's or out there on the live stream, hello. We are here today. We are here together to worship. And I always try and uh, see some some of a sermon theme or a reading theme in the songs we put in a prayer and praise set. Uh, it's a bit of a cop-out today, I think, because as we're going to be singing, thinking about what it means to worship, well, we're doing that the moment we start singing any of our songs. But I have tried, we have tried to look for that word worship punct uh, punctuating in all of our songs today. It was no accident that we began by singing that the reason we live once we've looked at God's holiness, gazed on his loveliness, then we worship him. And this is the reason that we live. So we're going to worship a beautiful name. We're going to worship him who hides us under the calming stillness of his wings. And then we're going to worship as we celebrate a mighty victory. Again, as Dave has already said, in church today, please just mumble along behind masks, but do mumble mumble in worship and out on the live stream please find your way of worshiping with us today as we start by singing of a beautiful name Yeah. 
of worship to a God who is worshipful because of the stillness because of the calm because of how he hides us away under his wing Heavenly Father we take a moment's silence to worship you in our own spaces We thank you, Lord, that we can come here physically or virtually to worship. A worship that is demanded of us, of, of every part of us. 
our souls, our lives, our all. And we are glad to be able to worship. So let us feel, feel the strength, the encouragement that worship brings and boils up in us in this place and then out there in the mission field, in our silences, but also in our joyful singing and our celebration. For we have a victory song to sing, a victory story to celebrate. And we can celebrate with the quiet, but we also celebrate with the rock and roll. Help us to celebrate in worship your victory. Amen. And you will never know how much fun it is singing, worshipping God up here. Hope you are having an equal amount of fun down there. And typically, I've been so excited, I left me words up here. So, let's be silent for just a second. St. Paul told the Galatians, I live by faith in God, who loved me and sacrificed himself for me. As people who have faith in God, let's ask him to open our hearts. We join together in the prayer of preparation, so we pray. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to make us ready to meet with you. Send your Holy Spirit on us now, we pray, that we may hear your word, share in your communion, receive your grace, and be renewed in your love. Amen. And as God's people of faith, we pray for forgiveness and a new start for all the things we've got wrong. Let us remember God's love for us and the ways in which we have failed him and rejected his love. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
Heavenly Father, we confess that we often stray from your ways, ignore your truth, and reject your life. Forgive us, we pray, and help us to live new lives as your people. Jesus said, love one another, just as I love you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love to us and confess that we fail to share this love with those around us. Forgive us, we pray, and help us to live new lives as your people. Pray and help us to live new lives as your people. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon us and set us free from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. So we may live our earthly lives for you and not lose our hope of eternity. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Carol's going to send the kids out now to their um, exciting DVD. So, Carol, all yours. Yes, there's some um, toys and um, a nice carpet in the cafe area uh, for the very young babies. And then um, children who are about age three um, up through all the Sunday Club groups. YPF, you have a choice. It's up to you whether you want to come and watch the DVD or stay here. Uh, well, it's the same. We've been following a, it's a family of um, children growing up with a Jewish background, um, but they're Christians in um, the Roman occupied world. And they apply the stories about the Bible and about Jesus to their lives. So when they're in a difficult situation, they think, ah, now, I remember and talk about the Bible story, and then you get the Bible stories in the story. It's, it's actually very well done, yes, um, friends and heroes. So, um, if everyone goes out through the door at the back, and I will nip this way and open the Christchurch room, and Gigi and Bev are going to be helping me today. And as we go, please sing our theme song, Number five, I think, I am a new creation.
And Linda is going to come to read to us now. We've got two readings from Linda, uh, a gospel reading from Robert, and then Robert is going to talk to us on worship together. What and why? Linda. Good afternoon, St. John's. Afternoon, Linda. Our reading is taken from Psalm chapter 40, 6 to 7, and Romans chapter 12, 1 to 8. And it's all on your uh, hymn sheet. Psalm 40, verse 6. Sacrifice an offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Bond offerings and sins offering you did not require. Then I said, here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. Roman 12, verse one to eight. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by, renewing, by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body, with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophecy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, reading from verse 9 to 17. Hear the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, O Lord. Lord. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O oh Christ. Christ. Amen. And good afternoon. Um, thank you for um, joining us again. You know, thank. Uh, welcome from, um, from me as well. Dave has welcomed you. Um, Richard has welcomed you. So let me welcome you in the name of Jesus as we hear his word. Um, I, I 
we are talking about worship here. And um, as I was listening to the songs Richard was singing, I realized that I, I, I would like to sing like Richard too. Um, to, to be, you know, to throw out my voice out there like, like he does. Um, I know my voice is not the best, I know, but I think I can try. So Richard, can you help me here? Um, I, I need you to help me with, um, I just want to sing a song of worship, if that's okay with you. Use, use the singing mic, I think, that's fine. Um, we, we, we can sing, um, I think the, the one just, we just sang, I am a new creation, okay? Is that all right? Okay, let's, do you want me to start or do you want, do you want I start. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation, here in... You're not singing with me, Richard. Yeah, I mean, there's no harmony that's going to work with that. Harmony? No. I'm, I'm singing... I'm always going to break the camera. Sorry? I'm always the camera microphone, my friend. Are you? Oh, right. I'm not singing to you, Richard. I'm singing to the Lord my God, okay? And I, I'm, give, I'm giving it all the best I can. So just join me, all right, if you can, all right. No more in condemnation, here in the grace of God I stand, my heart is open. I hear some chuckling out there, um, is there a problem with my voice? Do you have a problem? You have a problem? Uh, hang on a minute Richard, I am doing worship, because that's what Richard said. Richard said, let's sing some songs of worship, so I am doing worship, um, so do you have a problem with that? Anybody have a problem with that? Because I'm singing to my Father in heaven. If you really have a problem with that, that's your problem. But I'm singing to my Father in heaven. Richard, I know you, you sing very well. You see, the thing is, he's been throwing around this word, worship a lot. And let us worship. Let us worship God. And so on. He has a wonderful, lovely voice. How about me? I, I, I don't have a perfect voice. And yet I can sing a song of worship to my God. Maybe best in private, I don't know. But I can sing a song of worship too. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm not sure some of you here will probably join me in the same situation here, all right? Now, Richard, you keep on talking about worship and worship. What is it to you? What does it actually mean to you? Just a few quick words. To me? Yes. Worship. What does that word worship mean to you? Uh, it's something you are. It's, I don't think it's something you do. All right. It's because I, I, you, we can worship by singing Jesus we celebrate while we're hanging off the rafters. We can worship lying down on our backs half asleep behind the pews. It's, it's not about how you're doing it. It's, yes. it's the love and respect and the time that you put into it. Something that comes from within you. Is that correct? I'll take that, yes. Something that is given from the depth of your heart to your Father in heaven. Am I right in saying so? Yes. Thank you. But is it just about singing, necessarily? Is it necessarily just about singing? No. No. Not necessarily, Not because you said it's, it's, it's who you are and how you express who you are to your Father in heaven. Yes. Thank you. Thank we're, you very much, Richard. We're worshipping right now. We are worshipping right now, yes. but we're not necessarily singing. But we are worshipping. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. Round of applause for Richard, please. Because I think that we sometimes get the word worship thrown around so much. And when we come into a church, when we come to a place like this, we hear the word worship and we immediately think we have to begin singing. But you see, worship is a lot more than that. Worship is about who we are, as Richard said. God made us body, mind, spirit. He made us in his own image. He made us to commune with him. You remember the story in Genesis. God walks in the garden with, with Adam, and they communed. They walked along and they communed. I would say that that, communi that communing was an act of worship for, for Adam too. It was a presence, the presence of God there with him, doing that relationship with God, being with his Father in heaven. From the depth of his being, he communicated with his Father in heaven. Now, there are many expressions of worship um, that we, we, we hear of in the Bible and um, at the beginning in Genesis, um, the, the first few um, illustrations of worship, Genesis 4, 6, 426, Seth also had a son and he named him Enosh. At that time people began to call on or worship the name of the Lord. That is one of the first few references to this word worship. 
And in Genesis 12, 8, from there he, Abraham, we're talking about Abraham, went on towards the hills of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and then Ai in the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on, again, we say the word here could be worshipped, the name of the Lord. Exodus 3, 12. And God said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign to you, that is, I who have sent you, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Um, the other word for worship there uh, that was used, that is used in, in, in scripture in some translations, is you will serve the Lord. You will serve me on this mountain. But of course, that also could be used, uh, we could use the word worship in that context. So worship is a lot more than just singing. Worship, according to this part of the scripture, is also sacrifice. Worship is uh, the presentation of a sacrifice to God. Worship is um, God uh, being served. We serve God. We worship him as well. But we worship him in a very specific way. We worship him in spirit and in truth. Come guys, come, are, we, are we here? Let's do this again. We worship God in spirit and in truth. Not just by actions that we may do every day. Not by the, just by the actions that we do in church. We could come into church and do all sorts of things. You know, all the gesticulation and all the stuff that we do. Um, we, you know, we, we bow down and get on our knees and all the rest of it. Is that necessarily worship? I believe that it may not necessarily be worship if it doesn't come from your heart, if it is not from your spirit. For, for the Lord says, those who worship me will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. While I was preparing for this, uh, this talk, um, I found a very interesting um, article which speaks um, by, by a gentleman called Tom Curley. He's a pastor in the United States, in, in a church in the United States. And he gave five different expressions of worship. So, not just the singing, necessarily, but there are other expressions of worship that we need to take into account. And the first expression of worship that he, um, that he used is of the example of Paul and Silas singing in prison. Now, I don't know, I, I sang, I tried to sing there, um, and, and my voice wasn't exactly the best, so I don't know if Paul and Silas had the best voices on the planet either. However, Paul and Silas were singing in prison, in shackles, brothers and sisters. They were tied up in prison. But they decided we're not going to be put down, we are going to sing to the Lord, we're going to lift up his name, we're going to worship him, we're going to praise his name. And what happened after that? They had an earthquake. The earth shook because of the worship that these two guys gave to their Lord. They were praising him. They were giving him all the worship and all the reverence that they could. And the Lord came down and shook the earth. And the, the story goes on, they were released and so on and so forth. But God came down to these two guys because they were ready to sing out their hearts to the Lord. So yes, it is about singing. But brothers and sisters, perhaps we could sing loud enough, not necessarily to have an earthquake in Stratford, no. But that God's name be praised in whatever we do. Friends, if you are in dire straits, if you are in a situation where things are really rough, let me give you a piece of advice, personal advice. Worship the Lord. That's the best thing to do first. Worship the Lord, lift up his name, but I don't feel like it. Yes, worship his name, even when you don't feel like it. Lift up his name, even when things are so rough. In your, in your hour of grief, worship the Lord. He will come down and bring his healing for you too. That's the first example. The second example of an expression of worship is when um, um, a woman came to Jesus, when Jesus had been invited, um, Jesus was invited to the home of, a, of a Simon, a, a Pharisee, and Jesus went with his disciples. And they were eating and just relaxing and so on, and this woman comes along with a very expensive um, jar of perfume. Obviously, she 
was probably a woman who had, you know, she, she was, she, she perhaps used her body in, that, in the sense, you know, um, to get that kind of thing. We don't know. Um, but the point is, she was able to buy this jar of perfume, very expensive jar of perfume. And Jesus, she must have ha heard something that Jesus had said that had touched her heart and changed her heart. And so she came back to Jesus to say thank you. She came back in her own way to say thank you. And so she poured the oil on his feet. All right, she poured the oil on his feet and then used her hair to wash his feet. Wow. And his disciples said, how could this woman do a thing like this? You should know, you are a rabbi, you should know that this is a woman of sin. How could you let her do that? And Jesus says, leave her be. She has received a lot of forgiveness. She had a lot of sin in her heart, a lot of guilt in her heart, but she's now been forgiven. For those who have had, uh, been forgiven the most, the worship is probably the most as well. She gave everything she could, her reputation and everything else, to Jesus, to worship him, to give him reverence, because Jesus had completely transformed her life. That's the second expression. And perhaps we have similar experiences. You may, as an individual, feel God has touched you in a very particular way. Do not be ashamed to show your gratitude to God for what he has done in your life. There are some of us here who would say, the Lord has changed my life tremendously. You go before God and worship him in the best way you know how, the best that you can give, and give it to the Lord. That, too, is worship. The third example is the story of the widow's mite. Now, I'm sure that um, uh, most, well, I don't know, there might be one or two millionaires here, and if, if there is anybody, I'm quite happy to have a chat with you as you um, go out. But if we don't have too many millionaires here, we give what we can. Is that correct? Yes, we give what we can for our offerings. But there's something about giving that Jesus mentioned in the story of the widow who gave, let, let's for, for, for the sake of example, 2P. She came with 2P. Other people came with loads of money and threw them in the bucket, making a lot of noise. But she came with only two coins, and she dropped it in the bucket. And Jesus said, this woman has given more than all the other people. Why? Two, and the loads of money that they've put, no, it doesn't equate. She gave of herself. She gave everything she had. That's the attitude Jesus was talking about. The attitude here was what she gave of her heart. She, that's all she had, and of the very little that she had, she gave most of it away. Brothers and sisters, can we worship God with our money? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, some people say no. Anybody say yes? Anybody want to join me and say yes? Dave, one or two, can we worship God with our money? Absolutely. Because this money that you have, God has given you. He's made it possible for you to have it. When you give to the Lord, I'm not, please, let, let me really say this as a disclaimer. This is not some kind of um, uh, money rousing thing. I am speaking to the condition of your heart. Wherever it is that you put your money, what does Jesus say? Um, where your heart is, so your treasure will be. Where your heart is, so your treasure will be. Where we put our money, what we do with our money tells, uh, says a lot about who we are. And this woman gave everything she had to the temple, not because the temple was poor. The temple could have done without her money, but she gave it from her heart. And she used that as an act of worship with all she had. That's very contentious. And I know a lot of people will probably say, Robert, how dare you say that? Well, my brother, my sister, the money you have today, you may not have tomorrow. Yes? The money you have today, you may not have tomorrow. There are many people here, you can testify to it. The house you may have today, you may not have tomorrow. God provides all these things to us. God provides all these things for us. And if God provides all these things for us, how do we say thank you? We worship him with what we have. That's money. How about your time?
Can you worship God with your time? Yes, absolutely. The little time you may have to spare, you give it to help others perhaps. And you say, the, you say to the Lord, this I give to you as my act of worship. Because I lift up your name, I am thankful for what you have given to me, and I give to others because you have given to me as well. So, that is the third example of worship. Now, in uh, the second example, because we're coming down in descending order, the second is Abraham's story. Abraham is told to go and sacrifice his son. Would you do that if you had a, a dream or something? Would you go and sacrifice your son? Yes or no? Hopefully not. Please no. Okay? This was very specific to a very specific time at a particular time in scripture and at a particular time in history. All right. Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son, to take his son to a mountain, to offer his son um, to the Lord. And Abraham didn't even bat an eyelid. He got his son and off he went to so uh, sacrifice his son. If you remember the story, what happens just as he's about to kill his son, an angel stops him and says, Abraham, stop. Don't kill your son. Don't do that. There is a ram I have provi provided for you. Offer that ram as a sacrifice to me. Abraham was willing to offer his very best, the very best thing he had to his God. And in an act of obedience, brothers and sisters, in an act of obedience, Abraham worshipped his God. And the Lord says, because you are not, you're not withholding your own son, I will not withhold my blessing upon you. I repeat, we are not asked in this day and age to offer our children as a sacrifice. Let's get that straight. It's not our time and day for that sort of thing. But the Lord may be challenging you about something else. What is it that you're holding on to? That the Lord is saying to you, release this for me. Is it your talent? Is it your time? Is it your presence? Is it your energy? Whatever it might be. What is the Lord challenging you to offer to him? You hold on to it. You don't want to give it up. And he's saying, no, no, no. Release it to me. Release it to me and see what I can do with it for you and for all the others around you. Abraham was willing to obey, and in his obedience, that was an act of worship. And the first that uh, um, Tom Curley um, says is perhaps at the top of that list, is where Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice. You remember in, um, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus um, is praying, and he's praying to the Father and saying, Father, if you can, please take away this cup from me. Take away this cup. It's too painful. It's too horrendous to think about. But, can you help me with this verse? Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. He offered himself as a sacrifice, as an act of worship. Not his will to be done. Not his way to be done. Not his plan to run away, but that the, the Father's will be done. That was an act of worship to his God, to his Father. And that too may be an example for us to remember. Not my will, but yours be done. So why do we gather then? Why do we gather here to worship God? Why do we gather in this room? I believe we gather here to encourage one another, to be with one another, to help one another in different ways. As in, in the letter of Paul to the Romans, like the body, each one of us here has gifts. Each one. I keep talking about gifts, but let me repeat this. Each one of us here has gifts. Your gifts affect me. If you don't use them, I lose. My gifts affect you. If I didn't say I would preach, you are at a loss. If Dave decides he doesn't want to do um, vicaring anymore, you lose, we lose, because then he's not doing his job. If you decide that you, you don't want to encourage um, um, your brother or your sister or to speak and pray for others, one another, then we all lose. <coughs> In Romans it says, if it is to prophesy, prophesy. If it is to give, some of us here are blessed with the gift of giving. Give 
There are people who give more than you ever dream because they can give. If it is mercy, showing mercy to others, thinking about the poor, those who are on the streets, <coughs> excuse me, do so, help them. If it, is, if it is a gift for teaching, there are so many people here who have the ability to teach, to teach scripture, but you withhold your gift and therefore your brother and your sister do, do not get the benefit of your teaching skills. Well, if you have a gift for teaching, teach. On Saturday, this Saturday, um, <clears throat> here at St. John's at 10 a.m., we have a wonderful opportunity to discover our gifts. We are having a vocations day. It's been announced many times, but we're having a vocations day. Please come. Just come in, 10 a.m., um, and go th it, from 10 to 2.30. Um, come and meet people. Come and talk about what you think God is, is leading you um, to do or to be. You have gifts. Let the Lord lead you in how you can use those gifts. So brothers and sisters, why are we gathered here? We are gathered to worship God, yes, in praise, but in many other things that we do, to help one another, to pray with one another, to stand with one another. We are here to encourage one another. For I belong to you, as scripture says, I belong to you, you belong to me. And Jesus puts it perfectly, I belong to the Father, and the Father belongs to me. I belong to you, and we belong to him. And therefore, we all belong to one another. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> Nick's going to come and lead us in prayer now. <clears throat> Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that we can worship you in so many different ways. We thank you, Lord, that we have the freedom to express our desires of loving and worshipping you. And Lord, I pray for the many countries in the world where there are restrictions, Lord, where there is no freedom for believers to worship you. We pray, Lord, for the governments of those lands, Lord, that they would look favourably upon the Christian church. We pray for their families, Lord, who are in difficulties because of uh, pastors and leaders uh, in prison, Lord, because of worshipping you. And so, Lord, we just commit all those in our own congregations and those across the land, Lord, that are free to worship and lift up our praises in our hearts to you. And so, Lord, we thank you for all the mercy and grace that you give us, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this world that is so uh, under the uh, condition of sin. Lord, we pray for its peoples, Lord, where there's troubles, where there's war. We think especially of the uh, land of India, Nepal, Vietnam, Uganda, and other places, Lord, that are struggling with COVID, struggling with other problems of lack of peace, struggling with other problems of poverty, and Lord, we ask that uh, you will help the different agencies to alleviate uh, their, their need. And we ask, Lord, that nations will get together to help these uh, people, Lord, who are suffering as a result of natural disasters or whatever it may be. We ask, Lord, that you will be with them. Lord, in your mercy. Continue to pray for the people of Israel and Palestine and those, Lord, who have lost loved ones in this uh, building disaster in Florida, Miami. We ask, Lord, that you will be with them and that, Lord, you will comfort them, those that are grieving at the loss of those friends and relatives that they've had. And we also pray, Lord, for the street violence in our own country. And we pray for the agencies that are endeavouring, for the police force and others, Lord, that are endeavouring to uh, cut uh, crime amongst our youngsters in our streets. We pray, Lord, that you will give wisdom in whatever way they tackle this uh, area of uh, violence. And that, Lord Jesus, that our streets will be much safer and our communities, Lord, uh, be at peace. Lord, in your mercy. Commit to you those that are unwell. We pray for Anjum, for Minta, 
for Margaret, for Tom, Bernadette, Marcia, Kate, Wills, Tina, Brian, June. We also pray for those uh, that have uh, been affected by the coronavirus. And Lord, we pray for uh, those doctors and nurses that are helping in, in, in response to pain and suffering. And we think of others, Lord, that have known to us who are suffering as a result of illness, anxiety, or whether it be in body, soul, or spirit. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you are a healer and that, Lord, you come to our needs. Lord, in your mercy. And this week we give life to you for the thanks of Amanda's father who passed away in Uganda. And, Lord, we pray for their family and friends at this time of bereavement. We also commit to you the TFM uh, walk on their mission, Lord, between St. David's and Lowestoft. We pray for the health and safety of the teams. We pray, Lord, for their provision uh, in their, for their physical needs. We also pray, Lord, that you will give them opportunities for the gospel and for those walking to share their faith. And so, Lord, we commit all those that are speaking your word, Lord, those that are promoting uh, your love. And so, Lord, we just think of ourselves this week, that you will help us to be uh, available to you, that, Lord, you will uh, give us opportunities to speak about your love. In Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. The Bible says we're the body of Christ. We are in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you, band up there. And peace be with you, the kids all coming back from their DVDs. We're going to sing hymn number six now, and at the end of this hymn, our offering will be brought forward. Um, so if you want to make an offering, stick it in the bucket before, um, it's, uh, before the end of the hymn. And this is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, a traditional hymn. And I think we've, we've got the Treoki Male Voice Choir on this one, with any luck. <clears throat>
Father, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for those who have given them. We pray that you'll take and use these gifts and all the gifts that we've been given through different ways. Use them in your service, Lord, we pray. And we pray that you'll bless those who give and worship through their giving. Amen. You'll find our communion prayers on the yellow sheet. Please do join in with the, prayer, with the responses. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. So with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so in faith and trust we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Something's not right. We break this body. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. As usual, we invite anyone as a communicant Christian of any Christian church to receive Holy Communion. If you don't uh, want to receive Holy Communion, Please um, come forward for a blessing and Nick uh, or I will offer you a blessing instead. We ask you please to come out of your seats into the centre aisle, then return to your seats via the side aisle. That way we should manage to maintain social distancing. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you. I will receive on his behalf his blood which was shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Jesus died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
will open up my life in spirit and truth. Pouring out the oil of love as my worship to you. In surrender, I must give my every part. Lord, receive the sacrifice of a broken heart. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king? Savior, what can be said? What can be sung? As a praise of your name for the things you have done. Oh, my words could not tell, not even in part of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart. You deserve my every breath. For you've paid a great cost, giving up your life to death, even death on the cross. You took all my shame away, then defeated my sin, opened up the gates of heaven, and have me back on me in. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend? To so loving a king, Savior, what can be said? What can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? Oh, my words could not tell, not even in part of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart. Love 
love come down and as you show your face your face we'll see your glory Lord you have my heart and I will search for you let me be to you a sacrifice. Let's pray. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a re to living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Newsletters are green. Please do um, grab a copy if you're watching at home. The newsletter is on the website. Um, after the meeting today, there's a short meeting for YPF leaders and assistants in the Christchurch room. You know who you are, okay? Um, 1830 is Holy Communion. Same theme, but Iris is preaching this evening. Um, she's practiced at St. Matthew's at 10.30, and she'll be preaching on worship together. What is worship this evening? Um, this week we're aiming to be open from Monday to Friday, 10 till 2, and on Saturday we'll be open 10 till 2.30. Saturday is the Vocations Day. Um, you've heard Robert talk about it. If you want to go along, you can either sign up on Eventbrite, or you can sign up personally with Robert, okay? If, you, if, if like me, or just show up, he said. If like me, you're too thick for Eventbrite, you can just show up, apparently. Okay, that's Saturday. That's 10 o'clock until 2.30. Um, what else have we got this week? Um, it's the Archdeacon's Visitation um, tomorrow night, so our hard-working church wardens are going to have to go along and get their ear burned by the Archdeacon. Um, it's a, a, a once-a-year event. Tuesday top-up is looking at Ephesians chapter 3, Tuesday at 7 o'clock, do join us. Um, Thursday communion happens as normal. Dean of Vocations Day we talked about. Next Sunday is Holy Communion 10, 12 and 18.30. YPF Zoom has a week off this week because of this football stuff. But there's a football day of rest next Sunday, so YPF Zoom is back next Sunday. And um, Christchurch Three Mills, Dan would love to hear from you if you want to join in something. Um, Advanced State Mission Giving Committee meets on Monday, 5th of July. Um, and TFM Walk the Way Mission, we have a map here. Through Faith Missions have been walking from uh, St. David's, in the west, far west, you can't get any further west than St. David's, and lowest oft in east, and they're walking to meet in the middle. They started last week, um, and yeah, and they're, and they're meeting uh, up sometime in September. Yeah, the 4th of September, uh, they, there's two teams. One team uh, starting in the east, one team in the west. They only do a week at a time, don't they? They don't do the whole distance. Yeah. They only do a week at a time because this is a walk of faith. They haven't got any accommodation. They haven't got any food. They are trusting God to provide that on the way. And the main aim is to talk to people about Jesus as they go. And apparently the team in Lowestoft spoke to 10 people and gave out seven of the little evangelistic leaflets knowing God personally. Um, and that was before they'd even started. Uh, and then, as Dave says, different teams will take over each week. It's not a race. They've done about 20 miles this week. Uh, from in, I've given you the postcodes on the newsletter. They've gone in from the coast at White Sands Bay to... If you've not been there, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and I think, Dave, actually, going there was our first date. It was, yes. Whoa. <laughs> Don't tell everyone. <laughs> um, it's a lovely place. Um, and so the team from the West are in Clanhowell, 
and the team from the east are 20 miles in Bungay, I think, from Lowestoft. Uh, but we can follow their progress each week. I'm not going to bring the map each week, but the, um, the postcode, if you want to look it up on Google Maps, you can pray for them, please, because it is a massive venture. Uh, this Via Beata they're walking, I had never heard of before. I think it was a millennium project to cross the country with a path of Christian witness, uh, uh, the way of blessing, Via Beata means. And there are um, Christian, the sculptures, Christian art installations at various points along the way. So that's one of the things we can do in retirement. Is, is walk that because it sound it really does sound interesting. Uh, but TFM are walking it this summer, so please pray for them. Okay, thanks, uh, for Carol, for that. And we'll have a there, there is a blog you can follow uh, as where, about where they're going, and we'll have the postcode of where they've got to every week, so you can pray for those places. Um, some of you may have seen a picture on uh, Facebook and Twitter that I put up last week, uh, last night. Okay. Um, I was ordained 40 years ago in Sandalf Cathedral, 40 years ago, on the 27th of June, 1981. Most of you weren't born then, um, so I put the picture up just to prove that I haven't always had a grey beard, okay? Um, so I've been here for 31 of those 40 years. Thank you for your fellowship in faith. Thank you. And now we're going to sing our final hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Um, all our sins and griefs to bear. to worship him in all that you do in every part of your day go out and know that Jesus is Lord of all
And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, rest upon us and remain with us now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Oh, birthdays. I've forgotten the birthdays. Robert, thank you. And I think we've got one of the birthdays here. Give me hands. Sorry about this. I'm really, yeah, really not with it today. Okay, I've got a birthday card for uh, Eolua Shayemi, who is 13. Eolua Shayemi? Yeah, round of applause. A birthday card for Chidera Okpala. Chidera, happy birthday. Chidera is nine. Chidera, there we are. Happy birthday. And a birthday card for Grace Ring, who is 12. Happy birthday, Grace. We're going to give this to Uncle Joseph. Yeah. And I've got a couple more birthdays as well. Um, Rosette, uh, it's ber Rosette's birthday on Tuesday. Amanda Jane's birthday today. Mary Amoako's birthday on Saturday. Dexton Simpson's birthday on Sunday. Let's give them all a round of applause. And if you have a birthday this week, God bless you. Um, Ban, take it away with our closing exit hymn. Declare the glory of God, and all of the world will join the praise His wonders proclaim. The oceans and skies lift up their voice, and all He has made will rise to bless the King of all kings. Let us adore Him, let us adore Him, Jesus Christ is the Lord, eternity's King is coming again, the wall of the earth will fade away, His truth will Christ is the Lord. Jesus.
Jesus Christ.